Hi everybody, 2023 fountain pen wrap up. Well, this 2023 basically boils down to this pen. I inked this in April. I posted a video um, showing you how a bit of writing sample and I used the cartridge that came with it. For this size, you usually are stuck with cartridges anyway because otherwise you have to get a mini cartridge which doesn't couldn't fit as much ink and I put that inside this journal cover memory keeper a6 English Hobonichi Techo and that's it that's it and this came off sadly so the apple the mother of pearl apple came off the finial Fin I can never pronounce that word. Finial? Finial? Okay, so I had hoped that this is screwed on, but Bungo Box confirmed, sorry for my nails and for my fingers and for my skin. Bungo Box confirmed that Sailor applied this with glue and they're waiting for Sailor to advise them further. And I dare not use glue to put this back in in case there's certain glue that I have to avoid because I'm afraid that certain type of glue might adversely react to this particular acrylic material so until I hear back from them. I put this back into this cavity here and it does stay for a bit, but you can tell it's very wobbly and I have uh, had a, and I had a great time. I have a great difficulty trying to take this this here out of that after so I was stuck for a while with that being stuck in there but not being secure in there so it means that it can pop off anytime and of course during the filming of this video it came off again so luckily it came off here and not while the pen was being moved around because otherwise it's very easy to lose this it's so small so that's that's 2023 and I've done not very much uh, just as I done very little in 2022 due to my mother's major health event that has a domino effect in terms of my living arrangements her living arrangements and a variety of other things which I will not bore you with um, 2023 is basically this. This performed beautifully, as expected, uh, as all sailors um, pen the ink was in a cartridge because in mini, unless you have a mini cartridge, which does not, um, I can't remember if I've said it. This is like the fourth time I'm filming this. So the cartridge actually fit more ink than the mini cartridge. So most of us just use cartridge and it, flowed from April all the way to when I came back from my travel and I took this with me during my travel and when I cleaned it up and even when the cartridge was running out of ink it was still flowing I could still use it so one cartridge I mean it's probably more of a reflection of how much I haven't written with my fountain pens this year um this is it I largely oh but the one complaint I have, the, the fact that there's no threading here is, is still a complaint because you have to push it and rely on um, friction, um, you know, friction, what do you call it? Friction closure. And if it's not pushed hard enough when you write, like so, and in this model, you have to post the cap because otherwise the balance is a little bit off. Um, this got wrapped around here as you do, well, I saw I do this and often it came off and it means I haven't pushed the cap. I haven't posted hard enough and that really makes me cringe every time because of the idea of scratching this and creating micro fraction around the lip, around the edges here. It just doesn't give me pleasure at all. So the lack of threading here is a really 
it's a big con for me. And if I had known there's no threading here, I don't know if I would have purchased this. So I actually saw this at the pen festival and because I never, the pen show, I keep calling it festival. Uh, during the pen show, I of course went straight to, there are a few places that I went straight to, Bungo Box is one of them. I ended up buying uh, the ink, the Quartier Latin, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I think it means, simply means in French, Latin Quarters. Apparently Bungo Box is located in the Latin Quarters of Tokyo. Um, I saw this and I was telling my husband, oh, if I had known we're coming here, if I had known we're going to Tokyo International Pan Show, I would have just waited um, because surely each of those pens that you ship um, to get to you when you buy them online cost quite a bit in shipping, especially if you live far away like me, they cost about 40 to $60 to ship each. So you imagine the kind of saving you can do if you just buy them all together during a pen show. Yes, yes, of course, you'll have the risk of um, the risk of them running out of stock, etc., etc. But that is a conversation for a different video. So we'll talk about that uh, separately. So that's if I want to say sort of boils down to this really. Um, in terms of journaling and memory keeping, I've decided that next year is my last year. I have a funny feeling that this year will be my last year. I'm going to try to carry on next year, uh, simply because I've committed to a five-year techo, which ends in 2024, which covers the first five years of my 50s, the first five years after the pandemic, or the pandemic, or the post-pandemic world, and the first five years of the 2020s. But I think I'm running out of steam. And last year's uh, major live event involving my mom and all the implications and all the aftermath that affects me personally have completely knocked me out of any momentum that I had before. So that's a topic for a different video and a different day. But this was in here. I think I've made some videos reviewing this cover and I showed the pen in there. It's This is the Mini Pro Gear Slim by Sailor, but it's Bungo Box branded and Bungo Box designed, I believe, in collaboration with Sailor. Now, other than this, of course, there is the pen show, and that is truly the highlight of 2023 for me. It's my first pen show, my first ever pen show anywhere in the world, and it is an international one. We have people from Turkey, from China, from Japan, of course, uh, from the US. I think there's some people from the UK, I can't remember. It's two floors um, of all pens, and I managed to miss a lot. I was there for three hours uh, from nine o'clock in the morning to about one o'clock in the afternoon, and I missed quite a bit. Oh, before I forget, I've also started inking this platinum shape of a heart, which I purchased a while back, but I didn't have the mental space to enjoy until maybe a couple of months um, back. So after I finished my travel, I posted the inking and um, the testing of the nib in real time. So Platinum does what Platinum does. And this is a Platinum nib and I really enjoyed it. Although my mind wasn't as blown as I mentioned as my first experience with a Platinum um, nib uh, a while back. And people did say that Every nib is different. Every nib is different, although the general characteristic remain. And that is a lot of good feedback, hard, dense steel, but soft and smooth at the same time. It's very hard to explain. I'm having a lot of trouble explaining. Uh, the, the good analogy for it is pencil. Uh, it is hard, but it has that feedback and it's sort of have a soft surface at the same time. So this is really towards the end of 2023. Um, and I think if I want to be honest, I purchased this because I thought the dome sort of gimmicky crystal and a little bit of, a little bit of the, well, that gold bit there that is um, taken out is in here somewhere. And sometimes, you know, 
I have fun looking for it. And the other day, I think when I was posting a video of this, I think it it showed it was sitting there. There's a gold heart just sitting there. Um, yeah, so this. I mean, the fact that for me anyway, fountain pens are quite frivolous. If I want something functional, I'll stick to ballpoint pens. So a little frivolosity like that um, is to me is part of the pleasure. So going back to the Tokyo fountain pen uh, show, um, this one here from Lotus Pens in India from a gentleman who started this business in his 60s, so after he retired, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, I decided to save some money and stick to Yovo Steel Nib, a branded nib by Lotus Pens. So this performs like a typical, performed like a typical, that's medium, Yovo Steel. Um, and then we have this one that I showed you, this one, I asked for gold, 14K, also Yovo, also broad. It's just easy to have broad nibs because if you don't like it or if you get bored, um, you can easily um, grind them. No, it's medium, sorry, I think it's medium. The bigger or the broader the nib, the easier it is to reshape. And then, so that's from Turkey, from India, from Turkey. And then we have this one from Japan. This is a very specific type of lacquering from North Hokkaido. I'll talk a bit more about that in a separate video discussing this. I've cleaned all this from the ink and whatever I have left still inked, like this one here, I may have to clean it before I travel so that I have peace of mind unless I take them with me. So this one here is steel, and I have the new Bumbu Box ink in here, the Quartier Latin ink that is kind of between brown and black and gray. That's broad, Yovo steel nib. So basically, uh, whatever I bought at the show, I asked for steel nib because I was really getting quite gun shy about my budget because i was at the end of a very long international trip and as i've mentioned in my community post if i could recommend that you go to the pension at the beginning of your trip in my case it was not possible um, given that my main reason for the trip was medical and i have schedules to keep um so that's yovo yovo steel yovo steel yovo gold this one I ordered in after I came back to New Zealand, but I found at the studio during the show. This one I bought during the show. Um, this is probably one pen I could do not buying, but it was 20% off plus not having to pay for shipping. It was uh, considerable, especially given the interest, I mean, the exchange rate, it was a considerable saving for me. And I've always wanted a Sean Design pen so, and my husband and I, aside from this one, this is the one pen that both of us really was drawn into. Uh, he and I don't usually have the same taste, aesthetically speaking. I'm more drawn to cooler colors like turquoise. So there's one with a lot more turquoise in the body, but less drama in terms of the splatter here. And what really makes this, I think, stood out for both of us is that sharp red splatter against the yellow and green. And, become quite the contrast perhaps so that one there from Sean Design I believe is in the States based in the States but this was purchased through or from uh, its Japanese distributor um, I think part of me also want to support them I suppose um, and then this one here is Google Boxes Sailor King of Pens this is my first ever King of Pens this is in their Silent Night color, which is the color of the ink that they have. It is the darkest of blue. And when I saw this on their website, to me, it looks just like an ordinary 
black pen or almost black pen. There's nothing extraordinary about them. But when I saw this in real life at the show, of the two floors of pens that I rushed around for three hours all morning that I was there between nine and one, this, my mind keep going back to this one in my eyes every time I go back to Boo Boo Box's table, this pen just stood out for me. And you can't really see it here, but maybe it's the lighting at the time, I'm not sure. But it feels like there's a certain depth to the blackness or the dark blueness of the color. Maybe it's all the glitter that give the illusion of layers and depths. I'm not sure. Maybe it's an actual depth of layering. I have no idea. I can only tell you what I feel when I see it, which is it's so elegant and it's not just a black pen. That sense of depth in the darkness is what drew me in. And I thought, how did they manage to do that? And it's combined with this. I have a black 1911 Sailor a pen with this gun steel um, hardware and for whatever reason I really like that combination and some people argue it's a bit glum but I, I quite like it and so um, I didn't buy it at the time because of the price but then this is the one pen that I ended up paying 30% more off because I decided finally that I wanted it. And by then, I was out of Japan, I'm in New Zealand, and taxes here are high. High, high, high. <sighs> yeah. So this is a big pen. This is my first King of Pen. It's not the biggest pen I've ever held, but I knew that I had to compromise with how or modify how I hold bigger pens like this, girthier pens like this. I usually hold my pens this way. But because of the girth, it has uh, created a gap here and that put a lot of pressure on this finger. And so it becomes quite uncomfortable. So I have to change the way I grip it by doing this. And it's not a very natural way of writing for me. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, but uh, with the weight of the pen being here, this big pen doesn't feel too heavy at all. So this is a very, very handsome pen. My first ever king of pen from Sailor. And I really enjoyed it again. I'll do a separate video with um, with uh, sample writing, inking, etc. And then last but not least is another follow-up purchase that I would not have made if not for the pen show. Is this nameless at the time, but it has been named since. Uh, Fiori di Christophe. I believe they work with an Italian craft house uh, workshop or studio for the silver. I had a conversation with a viewer um, about how much more this model 03 modified pen that is retailing about, I think, 250 to 280. Mm, this is maybe uh, a lot more than that. And so silver is about a dollar twelve, a dollar and twelve cent per gram in New Zealand. Um, and this, there's about 48, no, 48 grams is the total weight of the pen. So 48 minus uh, 18 or 18 and a half gram of the modified 03 acrylic pen by itself. I estimated the silver to be about 20 grams. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, you can't really judge something like this from its raw material. So the raw material probably costs about 30 to 40 New Zealand dollars, all the silver. And of course, the bulk of the price will be in the time of craftsmanship and the time and cost of failed prototypes. In the time and cost of the two parties in Italy and in the US, perhaps meeting each other, discussing this. A potentially trip back and forth. I don't know. Uh, overheads and economy of scale because there's only 20 or 30 of this being made or they're planning to do 50 of these. I'm not sure. Um, but as someone who have sold some stuff before in the past, I understand how costs can accumulate. But ultimately, um, for me, it is not being able to cope with vintage silver overlay pens that I have been coveting for years and just couldn't get myself to deal with vintage pens. I've had some bad experiences with vintage pens 
again something to talk about on uh, a different video different day perhaps and so the slight back weighted is the only downside for me everything else is um, franklin christoph unique sig nib by yovo and it's gold 14 karat broad again the broader the nib the easier it is to change your mind later on and reshape the tip at the moment it has been reshapen into the uniquely franklin christoph sig nib by audrey and franklin christoph of course is based in the us of a so we have usa japan turkey japan india is, is a big sailor big brand but collaborating with a smaller brand i guess blue box an independent say pen who commissioned their pens um, and they simply produced and direct the production but um, the actual workmanship is done by artisans in north Hokkaido. this is from turkey and um, this is made by the person who mehmet who sold them and his wife who's a dentist who helped Mehmet with the Urushi layering here. Apparently there's about 40 to 50 layers here. This, I'm not sure who did the actual uh, hand painting. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's the gentleman who started this business himself. I believe this is also commissioned and um, cross people are recruited to do the final product, I suppose. So these two are um, workshop studio produced. This one here is studio self artist maker produced. So the seller is the artist. These two are not. The sellers are the architect and the producers, but other people make these pens for them. This is Sailor and Bungo Bob. Sailor is no need introduction. Big old Japanese fountain pen company with very unique nibs very known for their unique nibs. The Naginata Togi is a bigger version of this Kodachi, Kodachi um, nib here. That's something else I would like to talk about as well. Because the nib here, this Snow White here is thinner, is uh, finer, you can't really tell the difference in um, the variant in the lines and all the rest of it, but you can really feel it. What I want to say is that you can feel the tip being not normal fine or not normal whatever this is but has been reshaped into kodachi so you can feel the kodachi grind is what i'm saying um it feels different it feels a bit like the fine version of franklin christoph's sig nib it feels very different to uh the usual standard fine nibs and five, last but not least is this one here, um, independent uh, studio, Franklin Christoph, very well known among all independent studios or um, smaller craft studios in the fountain pen world, based in the US. The English speaking online fountain pen community, I think is, uh, quite centered around the, the US, I think. At least that's been my experience. Um, with a lot of social media, uh, such as uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you know, all these are American companies as well. So that's a topic for another day. And yep, that is basically 2023 font and pen wrap up. I'll update you with what's going on here. And I'll talk to you about nibs and writing samples next year. For now, I shall bid you, um, I don't know, given the situation and the state of the world, I find it difficult to say happy holidays, but um, have a graceful 
as peaceful as possible, restful and healthy holiday, a new year. Um, it doesn't take very much to be kind and to be compassionate. That's what I found, and, and sometimes it means so very much. And so um, I bid you end of the year greetings, and I will see you in 2024.